Okay, here's the secret. What all the top teams do to their bikes to make them run perfect. So right here is the first thing you're gonna notice. This is a O2 sensor that's welded into the header of the exhaust and any of the top teams will have this to be able to get their data acquisition, which will be some type of device like this in their bike. Now this bike here is no pro's bike, but it's my bike and I got the pro treatment and we have the dual injector going on. I've got Jamie Ellis with Twisted Development who's gonna to talk to us about this data acquisition and how it works. Yeah, so the CRF250 leaves a little bit to be desired in stock trim. So we went in and we tried a ton of different velocity stacks to figure out where the engine wanted and we ended up with a little bit longer one than stock and a couple different shapes and designs and stuff like that. We married that with a second injector kit and second injector kits don't bring four or five horsepower to the table, but they bring torque, they bring power on a stock bike, they bring power on a modified bike. So no matter what, you can always count on a little bit of performance and power. So that's what we decided to do with this build and it's been a lot of fun. All right, thanks Jamie. I've had a blast on the dual injector. It's a huge improvement on our Dirt Bike Magazine build. Now tell us about the data acquisition for the top race teams. So what we use data acquisition for is to tell if the bike is rich or lean, uh, GPS based, so we can tell at what corner, what's doing what. And you can pinpoint exactly what to do and how to make the motorcycle keep progressing to be better and better but that's also individual for each rider's needs. Uh, some riders like more snatchy throttle, more aggressive, wants the bike to go. Some want it to be linear so that they can touch the throttle earlier, feed it through the ruts. Uh, it just takes all of the nonsense work out of talking back and forth in human terms, where we can go in where numbers don't lie, and maybe people do. Okay, here we are at the laptop that Jamie has, and this thing is uh, uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi? Yeah, Wi-Fi. Right to the bike right now, so he's able to get this data acquisition off. And this is something like many of their top race teams would be using after a practice or test session. Yep, there's plenty of different flavors of how to get your data, different options. Uh, this one's from AIM. And basically everything that goes on to run the motorcycle comes out into this system. So going to list some of the more important ones would be throttle position sensor, RPM, uh, engine coolant temperature sensor, GPS speed, um, external voltage of the battery, so you can see if you're getting bad data logging or not, you know, if your battery's not charged. Uh, voltage out of the stator, right? Like if you have a stator that's dying. So this is the type of stuff we're looking at. Um, we have health checks that we call. If it's a normal moto, you're not chasing any problems. You're just out there to see, you know, is this bike ready to race the second moto? So every race team out there would, you know, pretty much have some sort of this going on. Like if, if your engine coolant temp gets past 220, you know, you're, ner you're nervous. Should you put a new engine in, do you have a bad head gasket? Yeah. Uh, if, uh, if overall you're running really hot for no reason, you're not making much power. So this is just like a quick snapshot of what you would use to evaluate the engine health of the motorcycle and that if you can go to the next moto or if you have a problem. Uh, so it happens on the fly. And then uh, the other features probably would be from, you know, the tuning aspect and being able to narrow in to see, you know, what, what a rider may be talking about in the event that something did happen during the race. All right, so let's take a little bit of a look deeper into what uh, we did today. Okay, so I don't know if this is a, a lap from Jay or a lap from I being out there, um, but you can see the GPS speeds a lot faster here, so it was probably my lap. It was faster, it was mine. <laughs> <laughs> the throttle was wide open, so it was probably <laughs> definitely me because uh, I was doing that on purpose because I knew this would come out in the video. Right. Uh, but yeah, so you can see here, if we just pinpoint in, um, this is, you know, going to Talladega. So right? it has a little map of the track right yep, now. Yeah, that's, that's your GPS coordinates. That's, that's a whole layout of what's going on on the track. Okay, so we're going to zoom in on this one area. See how this is getting tighter, tighter, tighter. Okay, so this is going down the start straight, and you can see earlier we were a little bit rich so the lower this number is so the air fuel ratio is the amount of unburnt air that's coming through the exhaust system and that's what that sensor that's in there is telling us it's basically saying are, are you efficient or are, are you burning too much or are you not burning enough it just kind of calculates what's coming out of the engine right so then we go back into the tuning software to make those changes and that but, magic number typically is around 13. yeah so so naturally aspirated engine non-boosted engines um, you would want to be 12.8 to 13.4, I'd say is the, is the happiest range of where that works. And then each fuel has a different stoichiometric value that you could chase. Like some BP fuels will, will tune down to 12.2 on the dyno. 
and um, and we'll see more performers there. So which that, is richer. Which yeah, people that, understand. That, Twelve yeah. two goes richer. You get up to thirteen five to fourteen, it's getting too. It's a lot leaner on that air fuel ratio. Yep, that's correct. So uh, this just looks right into what's going on. Um, as we zoom out, you can see more of the track here. Uh, you can see this is us. That's where we're parked. So we leave from where we're parked. <laughs> we head over to to do some laps. Um, so yes. Yeah, so and and to, to clarify, you did dyno this whole setup before, but we were able to tune it today and get it a little bit better based on those settings. Yeah, and what it comes down to is the weight of the dyno drum. Uh, if the dyno drum is heavier, normally the engine will labor more and it won't need as much fuel and vice versa. So it's nice to finish the projects like we like to do out here in the field. That way we can actually see how rich or lean they are with good traction. Like if you went to Southwick where the sand is really deep, you might need you know, a little bit less fueling for performance, but you might put a little bit more fueling for safety reasons because you're in the deep sand and the radiators are clogged. So you can kind of look to this software to make an educated decision on what you're going to do when it comes between, you know, getting ready for Moto 1 or Moto 2. You can, you can kind of take a screenshot of what's going on. And the biggest thing this helps you with as a business helps you set up so you dyno it and then you can go test with guys and come up with the best settings for your customers, right? Yeah, yeah, and that, that's what we're doing here today. So this is actually going to be a, a bike we're going to test in a, a future article. Uh, but I, I like to make sure that we're not leaving a bunch on the table and get out and ride them myself whenever I can. So oh, yeah, that's what we're doing here today. Well, it's awesome. Anyway, so, all right. Well, great. Uh, it, it's been really fun and it's eye opening. And uh, most anybody that's watched a Supercross or National, you see in between motos, these guys are all hooking up. The top teams are all hooking up laptops there and they're, they're getting this data. They want to know what's happening to that engine during the race. Yeah. And there's I mean, we're, we're scratching the surface here for this video. There's a ton of other stuff. What about the heat? And... Hey, show that heat uh, of uh, the bike, how low it was. My, you know, my, and I'm not riding obviously as hard. If somebody else fast was on my bike, that temp would probably go up 20 or 30 degrees. Okay, so you can see here, like this is a natural, what, what you would expect, right? Like um, we're, we're going through part of the track and then whenever it's more demanding. So this is going up the hill at Glen Helen here, yep. which is the biggest uphill we have, right? So you can see, I mean, we're, we're going from 138 you know, up to 143. So it's it's not crazy, but that is a very loaded part of the track, right? Yeah. Now, the minute that you turn and go down the hill, look at your temperature. It goes right your down. Your coasting comes right down. So this is where you would look to see if your engine cooling is, efficiency is, is actually happening, right? Like if this line went steady hot, 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 hotter and hotter and hotter, you know, you'd have a problem. Um, and that's where you have to look into additional cooling or, or something else is going on. Yep, could be a head gasket. That's normally the number one situation for if you're if you're having any cooling problems uh, or it could just be your cooling system or your heat dissipation you know isn't working all right so hopefully that gives you a little insight to our dirt bike magazine build what we're doing with a dual injector but but also into what all these top teams are doing this is just touching the surface of what jamie at twisted development is able to do also all these top teams have this type of technology so it's really cool to see this kind of you know f1 race car tech type technology where they want to look at exactly what the engine's doing and then make adjustments and that's really cool so it's cool to see it in our sport i still don't want to ever go back to those two stroke sounds because i love how well these four strokes run these fuel injected four strokes and this throttle is just perfect and that's the way those bikes run uh, that are built for those top teams so hopefully you guys enjoyed that gives you an inside look at that we'll see you guys next time remember to like comment and subscribe see ya